You're not big, Libretti. All right, Jabronis, we're back. Welcome back to another riveting episode of the Libretti Podcast Diary Show, the LPDS. I'm your host, Libretti. Uh, for the you new folks out there, if, if, there, if there are any, don't forget uh, to like this video, put on your post notifications on the YouTubes and the Apples and the Spotify's and subscribe to all those if you want to keep getting more of incredible, incredible content because the hits never end here. Even Randy likes it. He wants to hang out if you can see us in YouTube here. The LPDS official dog, Randy, the second official dog. Stan the man was the original, the OG, rest in power. But yeah, go ahead and uh, and check it out. And uh, that's the plug for the day. A um, couple things that happened this week. I want to bring up before we get into the, the into the down and dirty. Um, something I saw, everybody saw, I'm sure. Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly got engaged. Uh, it's not important stuff. Okay, I I. Shouldn't really be talking about it. It's not like I'm a TMZ addict and I care really about this stuff at all. But I, somebody's got to have an intervention with Megan Fox already. I mean, how many times do you have to get into a high profile celebrity relationship with somebody? Get engaged after four months. They're not even they're not living together. It's been like six months they've been doing the do. And it's like, I get it. If you're really in love, it doesn't, there's no time on love, whatever you want to, whatever you want to say, got it. Cool. I get, I'm, I'm there. I'm right there with you. But when, when you have a history of these aggressively like full throttle relationships that are also in this, in the public eye, every second of it, every dry hump and feelage session is in the public eye. I mean, it's clearly a recipe for disaster. So what makes you think this is going to be like doing the same thing over and over again is going to work? So maybe I'll put this up later on. We'll take bets. I'll, I'll find a way to do that. Maybe it'll be a future poll um, or we'll find a way to do LPDS bets or something like that. Like what are the uh, the odds that this lasts like more than it, more than a year even? I don't even know what you want to what the timeline would be. but. If they do break up, you heard it here first. There was high likelihood the odds were not in their favor. They got to, she's got to figure it out. But I best of luck to them. By the way, does everyone remember how Machine Gun Kelly before, before they became Machine and Megan Gun Kelly, that he was a rapper, like this, this tough guy rap rapper? And then Eminem came in and just, dragged him through the mud and showed him how to really shit talk so much so that he completely switched over to the like the pop genre. I don't even know what he is now. He seems like a nice guy, but he he got worked so hard by one of the greatest to ever do it that he decided I'm going to hang up the rap game, the shoes or whatever and uh and get into the pop business, the love song, whatever he does now. So I guess that's good. He adapted. You adapt or die. You know, we always talk about that on the show. So good honor for doing that. And I wish them well. I like I like MGK. I like Megan Fox. But holy hell, man, we you got to prudent plan a little bit better. I mean, there, you got to put a little bit of logic inside your relationships here. You can't just be all emotion or all whatever, whatever you want to call it. All right, moving right along. A little sports update for everybody who cares, like two people, me and, and sewage Phil, wet cat. Easy with the camera there, Randy. Uh, the New York Giants finally fired their head coach, Joe Judge, after two of the worst games I've ever seen the Giants play in the history of my lifetime watching the Giants. The last two games of the season, they played the Bears and then the, the four skins. And got absolutely embarrassed and demolished and emasculated on the field both times. It was almost as if like 
the number one team in the NFL just put on Bears jerseys and Foreskins jerseys and went out there and just beat the brakes off the Giants. Absolutely embarrassing, despicable. During the Foreskins game, the Giants on their own like four-yard line did a QB sneak play on second and third down. Second and third down, they did a QB sneak in their own red zone. Talk about a white flag. Talk about giving up. The game was decently close at that time, too. And they just gave up. They just quit. That, that was what that play, those play calls were. I quit. It was embarrassing. And Joe Judge, who I liked, I liked the, him as a head coach. He had to go. You can't have that, that type of ending to your season and expect to have a job after. <clears throat> Excuse me. Absolutely terrible. And then the GM, well, Mendelbaum, what's his name? Gendelson, Gendelman, Gettleman. He retired right after the game. I think it was a forced retirement because everyone was too much of a coward to just fire him too, but he's now gone. So in the span of this year alone, you have the offensive coordinator, Jason Garrett, who I think was a Cowboys plant, a Dallas Cowboys plant from Jerry Jones, at googly eye SOB. He's gone, canned, tossed. Mendelbaum, the GM, decided to retire seconds after the final game. The whistle blew on the final game. And then hours after that, Joe Judge gets canned. So just like we said earlier in the season, the, the Giants had to clean house. Had to clean house. Now, the only thing left for them to do is to cut most of their players because they were, I don't even want to call them players. They were just guys dressed up in costumes as as New York Giants and sat out there on the field. That's all they did. They were absolute trash. They got to go too. Almost all of them. There was like two good players. Absolutely embarrassing. So that's the update on the Giants. Thank you. Thank you for finally cleaning house and we'll see what happens. I don't, if they don't take care of the garbage player situation, it doesn't matter what coach is in there. Okay, you can't keep, you can't teach a pile of shit to play football. Sorry. Doesn't matter who is in there. If it's Belichick, he can't do it either. And I know he's the he's the goat apparently. So All right, that's that. Um last week's episode, Fanny Pack Pontifications was a fun one for me. I got a lot of fan feedback. I mentioned during that episode a couple of uh, individuals who who were against the fanny pack, but didn't give reasons why. I did I did get messages back from them, explaining themselves, apologizing for not initially giving responses and providing that information ahead of time. Uh, but everything, the air is cleared. The fans are all good to go. If you don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, click up. At, I'll put the link up here at the top right. Of the, how you doing? And you can click on that and go check out the episode yourself. And then you can make your decision on if uh, are you pro or against men rocking the fanny pack these days in 2021. Um, but yeah, that's that. That's the uh, the administrivia for the day. The news reports for the day. Nothing else going on right now. So uh, with that. We'll step into the cage. Okay, let's run. All right. Today's Into the Cage segment is proudly sponsored by Byron's Ball Gag COVID Masks. Everyone is getting tired of the same old mundane looking masks that don't even protect you against any viri and also make you look like you're wearing a maxi pad on your face. Well, now you can spice up your day with a COVID-friendly ball gag mask from Byron. The patented ball gag technology not only claims to protect you, but also gives you that feeling of being naughty out in public that you so desperately desire. So visit www.pieholeprotector.com for your first, first order of BGMs today. And if you spend more than $15, 
you get a complimentary pair of COVID safe anal beads to prevent that dastardly COVID from sneaking into your back door. Another good, ambitious individual taking advantage of a situation. They see a gap in aid and support to the great American people, and they fill that gap with quality, safe, entertaining products. Byron, good guy. Go check him out. All right. Cage fact today. So he recently did a roundtable. There's some Nick Cage, I'm saying he we all know who I'm talking about. There's some sort of like uh, Hollywood thing that they do called these roundtable interviews where they have a bunch of uh, big timers supposedly uh, on there and they ask a bunch of questions. They have like two hour long conversations. And Nick Cage was part of one of these roundtables. In this discussion recently, he 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 talks about um, a time on on set of a movie where he had to be riding a horse for most of the movie. He was a cowboy, I guess. And the horse they gave him was called Rain Man, and apparently it did not like Nick Cage, which is blasphemy to say the least. The fact that that horse is not glue right now boggles my mind. At the very least, cut a couple of horse sliders off Shroot Farm style and, and let them know what's, what's up. But apparently he didn't like Nick Cage, and the whole time he terrorized Cage throughout the whole filming on the movie. He even got to the point where he was trying to buck him off, buck Nick Cage off of him, off the horse, to try to, like, kill him or something. And Nick Cage went on about it, talked about how he, like, haunts his dreams. He thinks about that damn horse every day. And one of the other actors, I forgot his name, something Majors, Jonathan Majors, maybe. I didn't, I didn't recognize the guy, which could only mean that he's probably not in many Nick Cage movies, so... He actually mentioned that he worked with that horse in the past as well because he knew the horse handler and uh, did it, you know, somewhere else in the area. So he knew and he's like, I never had a problem with him. So it must have just been Nick Cage who had the problem. All everybody at the round table had a good laugh. Uh, the <laughs> the little guy was also there. What the hell is that guy's name? I forget every time. Uh, he was in the, the Game of Thrones and he was the bad elf on Elf. Ah, shit. I forgot his name. I'll, I'll think about it. But he was part of that. Don't... Dinklage. Peter Dinklage did it again. We got it again. I'm telling you guys, this brain, it's slow and it, it's probably stupid to the to the untrained eye, but it's got it up here. It's a steel trap and it remembers everything. Peter Dinklage was also part of that that round table and everybody enjoyed the conversation and listening to Nick Cage regale them of his tale of the deadly horse, the Rain Man. Now, there is a conspiracy theory about this, that uh, horses in general actually have a dislike, a fear uh, of vampire bats because vampire bats actually attack horses and go after them for whatever reason. And horses are sort of like genetically now uh, disposed to not liking them and fearing them. And because of the conspiracy and the thought that Nick Cage might also be a vampire, that's the logic. That's the six steps to Kevin Bacon, six degrees of Kevin Bacon, that people think he's also a vampire because even horses don't like him. So uh, take with that, you know, what, what you will. But that's the Cage fact today. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. I sure did. Go check out the interview. If I can find the video of the round table, I'll pop it up over here on the top right. Uh, otherwise, go check. If you just look up Nick Cage round table or Nick Cage Rain Man horse, you'll be able to find it somewhere. So um, have at it. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Moving on over into the junction. Spin the logo up. Now, I posted another question for everybody. Uh this was based out of my own personal experience. So that's further proof that this is this is a show for the people by the people as well. I'm not just some uh, trust fund baby or somebody sitting in an ivory tower thinking I'm better than everybody else hiding behind a microphone and a computer and a how you doing. I'm out there. I'm making the mistakes. I'm doing the stupid crap. I'm learning as I go, just like the rest of you. I'm the imperfect human being everybody everybody can relate to. 
This is what this show is. This is the people show it by the people for the people for the junction. Okay. So I'm out there in traffic. I'm getting heated. A whole bunch of different things are going on while I'm out there. And it got me thinking. What other shit gets me hot and bothered real quickly that when you actually step back and take a second to think they're really not that big of a deal. And I wanted to hear now what you guys thought of that, what the fans, you know, have to say about it as well. Because I do enough complaining on this show. You guys know that I do it every week. I'm complaining about something. There's always something out there. Worth getting hot and bothered over, burning some calories over. But I wanted to hear from you guys and hear what you had to say. So I solicited for it on the Instagrams. I thought I posted on Facebook, but maybe it got removed or I just didn't post it. I don't know. I probably just forgot to post it because I'm an idiot. But uh, I'll try to I'll try to be better at that for the next time uh, we try to get some fan interaction, some fan feedback or what have you. But um, the question was for everybody who uh, wasn't following on the Instagram story, it's what is the most trivial or little ridiculous tiny thing that gets you the most heated and most angry. And what I mean by that is, you know, something that's really not that big of a deal, but that really sets you off or what seems to be not a big deal that really sets you off and really grinds your gears and whatever other expression you can think of about getting angry really fast, um, blowing a gasket. That's a good one too. Um, we got a wide array of answers, by the way, I was I was very pleased with with the feedback. It was pretty good. Um, a lot of a lot of similarities uh, to what gets me going on a regular basis. And also, and this is important. And we're gonna we're gonna circle back to this. I hate saying circle back, Libretti. Just look. If I say that again, call me out on it. Comment. Tell me when I did it, and I'll uh, I'll no, I'm not doing it anymore. I hate that stupid. I'll circle back to that. Shut up, Libretti. There's an important piece here. There's an important similarity and theme with all these with all these issues and things that get you guys angry that I want to bring up at the end. So make sure you remind me to bring it up because it's 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 going to tie the whole room together, tie everything together. Big Lebowski reference for all you guys who don't know. All right, so. We got a lot of feedback from different fans. Bone Crusher came in hot with some. The Creature, Sewage Phil, the Wet Cat. I'm trying to think who else that you guys know, cast the characters wise. But a lot of good feedback. Uh, one of them was, and this is something I think I might have discussed uh, on the one episode a long time ago when I talked about uh, gym fitness center etiquette. Uh, I'm pretty sure I did it because it's a common problem and I hate it as well. But it's when people don't put their weights back at the gym. I saw, I think I bitched about this a few weeks ago as well on the New Year's episode or maybe right before that when we we're talking about the New Year's resolution is being in the gym and it's filling up the space. And I don't care as much because that's good that people are trying to get better at least. Uh, but the people I hate are the regulars who are inconsiderate and not putting their shit to get shit back. This is what we're talking about. You you use the dumbbells or you put you take plates and put them on a bar and then you don't put crap back where it belongs. And then people have to go searching around the gym to go find it and use it. And then by the time they get back to their spot, maybe their spots now taken or something or the dumbbells are gone and, and it's kind of jacks up your workout. Sometimes I could do a whole hour long workout with just like one set of dumbbells, the same set, whole bunch of how you doings, dumbbell rows, bench press, skull crushers, whatever, curls for the girls, buys for the guys, whatever you want to do in 2022. So if they're gone, if there's only one set of 25s and they're missing, you're, you're out of luck. You're SOL. And it's frustrating. Now, the triviality of it all, because I want to bring this up each time so we take the step back and try to understand this piece, is that at the end of the day, if that's the worst thing that happened to you that day, that you, you couldn't find the 25-pound dumbbells, you had a pretty good day probably. 
don't forget, there's still people out there don't even have toilet, let alone 25 pound dumbbells. So, but I feel the frustration every time I go to the gym, and that's that's that happens, and it happens a lot here where I live. I told you the gyms are hot garbage. They're as bad, if not worse, than the New York Giants and the Yankees, for that matter. Man, I cannot believe they re-signed Gary Sanchez. That fat, lazy SOB, Gary Sanchez. I'm sure he's a nice guy, though. All right. What else we got on this list here? Ooh, somebody put... This is an interesting one. And I'm reading my list on the computer here because I wanted to get everyone's feedback bulletized and organized so everyone, you know, so you can hear about it. This this fan wrote back when people wear shoes in my house. I don't know why, but it bothers me. That's what she that's what her quote was. Now, I get it. We had a, a similar discussion when I talked about the disgusting, despicable bare feet people that walk around in public like the airport with flip flops and then they're in the bare feet. And then they're tracking that back all over wherever they go back to their house and their beds are disgusting. Well, it's, it's very similar when people are wearing their shoes inside other people's houses. You don't know where that person's been. What if that person just got done walking through a pile of manure? And now they're, they're tracking in all the, the poo-poo frag from the manure pile into your house getting into the, into the shag of your carpet. That's a problem. That's germs. That's stinkiness. It's unsightly. If it stains, you got to wash the whole carpet or maybe replace it. It's not, it's not a pleasant experience. So you don't know what else is going on there. What kind of germs they're tracking in and getting you sick with. So I get it. Plus, I'm the same way. Now, let me caveat that, a little LPDS caveat here. You know I don't like walking around in flip-flops or barefoot or anything like that. So what I do, I do it here, and then if I know for sure that a friend of mine has a no-shoes policy in the house, I will bring over my special indoor shoes that I have that are clean. They stay indoors. I clean them regularly, not just with water, but with soap and water, Clorox wipes, Lysol wipes sometimes if I can't get the Clorox. And those bottoms of these Skechers I got, these are Target Skechers, very comfortable, $25 maybe. I forgot how much they were, but the Sketch Daddies are great. They're clean. They're squeaky clean for a pair of shoes I've had for over a year now, probably two years now. Only wear them indoors. When I go outside to walk the dog, Randall, I switch them out with my outdoor shoes. And if I'm going to a friend's house, I bring over those shoes with me. And I let them, we have the conversation ahead of time. Hey, look, I got a problem not wearing shoes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring my indoor shoes. Is that okay? They're clean. Yeah, that's okay. There's a respect there because I understand what it's like for people to track in a bunch of dirt and germs and shit into your house. And I don't like it either. I, you got to have respect for that. So I get it. Again, if we're going to talk about the triviality behind that, that issue, I guess you could say it's just shoes. You could just clean your house. You've the fact that you have a house, you should just shut up about it. Whatever. Got it. I'm still with them on that one. I'm still with the shoes. Be clean in other people's houses. Respect other people's houses. Clean your shoes. Bring indoor shoes. Don't be disgusting. My sister chimed in. We're, we're going on to the next one, by the way. My sister chimed in with a little smart assy comment thinking she got me. And she said, what, what, this is what gets her angry is big nose idiots. Now, what else, that's all she said. Now, without you know, saying anything else, there's the implication she's talking about me because I consider myself a big nose idiot. In fact, it's one of my regular hashtags. I'm a self-proclaimed big nose idiot. Got it. But it got that got me angry too. Her saying that got me angry. But I stepped back 
I was going to fire off a shit talk right away, a quick response behind the, the confines and safety of my, com- my computer and my keyboard where she couldn't get after me. But I, again, just like getting angry in traffic, I step back to, to figure out why I'm getting angry, if it's worth the effort. And instead of typing a shit talk back, a response, I decided to refrain from asking her if her anger comes every time she looks in a mirror because she looks like me and we both look like Adam Sandler's Jack and Jill movie. I didn't send it, though. I did not send it. Okay, I could have sent it. I wanted to. I typed it out. Does that make it get you mad because you look in the mirror every day and see it every day? Question mark. Love you. But then I refrained. I deleted it. Didn't send it. Thought about it. And that's a key thing here, guys. You can think things. I think negative things all the time about people. But it's once you say it to that person or, or publish it to them via social media, email, text, whatever, that's the problem. That's when you cross the line into shitty person territory. And that's what you want to try to avoid. You want to be able to control those negative thoughts, take a couple of deep breaths and release them out into nothingness as opposed to into the social media sphere. And that's what we did there. So thank you for that submission. I'm very happy she submitted. She doesn't listen to the show. She's busy doing whatever she's doing, being a mom on her Peloton, teaching, teaching the youth the future, the two youths. God knows what they're teaching over there in, in these days in New Jersey. Could be anything. But thanks for thanks for the for the feedback. I hope she comes in more with more shit talks because I like a good shit talk. You know me. I love a good shit talk session, especially when it's between friends and family. It's close. It's funny. It's great. Love it. Keep it coming. Now, speaking of shit talk kings, the creature, Steve Ortman who I'm trying to convince to get his blog up and running again, bullpen GM, or get a podcast going, talking baseball again, because he's incredible talent at that. The people need to hear about him doing that. So I hope he decides to to get it going again. But the creature came in with a whole laundry list of issues. And let me tell you something. Every single one of them I can relate to, and it gets me hot and bothered just as well. The first one was... And this one, I don't remember if I discussed this prior, but I know I've had this conversation with people prior about the same exact thing. It's when people in grocery stores walked into the express 10 items or less lane with a clearly full cart of more than 10 items. And then they and then they sit there and look at the cashier. Like the cashier is the idiot. Like I had, you know, why are you telling me it's 10 items or less? It's not like this sign was right in front of my fat, stupid face when I walked down the, the, the aisle there into the, into the tunnel, the cashier tunnel, the registered tunnel. It says it right there in front of your stupid face, 10 items or less. You have 200 items and a binder of coupons. And you think you can just get away with that? It's, it's com- incredibly inconsiderate. It's selfish. I have a a hard time believing that many people are stupid in this country. There's got to be a middle ground. There's got to be a balance. It's probably half are stupid, half are inconsiderate, which is not great, but I guess it's better. What what do you guys think is worse? Everybody being that stupid and going through anyway, not seeing the sign, or everybody being that inconsiderate and going anyway? I don't know. I don't. That's a good one. Maybe I'll make that a poll question in the future as well. What's a what's worse? an idiot or an asshole. Tough one. But that gets me hot and bothered. Again, stepping back, it's just, it's grocery shopping. You got your cart of stuff. You're going to leave with your cart of stuff. It'll be bagged up, of course. You're going to put your cart away, of course. And then you're going to go home with all your stuff. Probably drive by a couple of homeless bums, especially if you're in Syracuse. And they're not going to be able to do that. So Again, we got to try to step back and think about the whole the whole picture here. But 
that gets me heated in the in the moment as well. Another thing that gets me heated, and I know it gets other people heated, my sister included, because we talk about this on a regular basis. It's bad park jobs. People who park like jabronis and then leave their car like that. And here's here's the problem that I have with it, and I, I'm pretty sure I can speak for the creature who submitted this as well. The problem is when you get out of your car, you can clearly see what, what your car looks like in the parking space, the situation at hand. If it's between the lines, if you're crossing over to another spot, whatever it is, you can see it when you get out of the car. If you if you drove there, you have eyeballs to to look around and see it it's yourself. And instead of getting back in the car and fixing it, they just continue on their day. Ruining spots. The second third order effect that happens when one person parks like an ass bag affects the entire parking lane. That whole side all the way down the line is now affected because the next person can't park normal anymore because they got asshole right here parked crooked or taking up three spots. So then they have to be able to get out of their own car or have their passengers be able to get out of the car safely without hitting that guy. So they got to park like ass bags. And then all the domino effect all the way down the line. And you don't even know who the original ass bag is at that point anymore because everyone's parked like an ass bag at that point. Very frustrating and annoying. Almost as frustrating as when I'm parked in the back of a lot by myself to get away from it all and to also get my steps in. And some some ass bag idiot parks right next to me. With all the spaces open. That's the only thing more frustrating when we're talking about parking lot etiquette in your vehicle, I think. If you got something better, please let me know and pass it on. But I think that's probably the the top two most frustrating things for me in the parking lot is the bad parkers and then the ass bags who park next to me. Now, stepping back, you got a car. You're in a first world country going to probably a mall or a department store, a box store, whatever they call them, to get more first world things for yourself. If that's the worst thing that happened to you that day, that someone parked like an ass bag, that's fine. Well, you can move on. Got it. But in reality, you can't move on because it's garbage. And I get it. Another bad thing this is from the creature. We're going to keep moving on. I got some schmutz on my computer. I don't like it. I think Randy knows my computer and now it's bothering me tremendously so i'll fix that later damn it randy when people are at the restaurants at the restaurants when you're out at a restaurant eating and people are ordering food even at a drive-thru wherever you are and people order food when they when they order they say something like i need this i need a salad i need this burger i need the i need the ketchup on the side if it's not on the side i send it back You don't need anything. All right. You're paying for us. You're paying for a service, a convenience service, essentially. So your lazy ass doesn't have to make food yourself. And really, that's the only reason why like that is the core of going out to eat or getting drive through or takeout or whatever it is. You can you can hide it behind any reason you want. It's somebody's birthday. I got to wine and dine a, a future client, a business dinner, a romantic date. The core reason behind all of that, going out to eat or getting taken or whatever, is so that you don't have to cook. You can still get good food and your lazy ass doesn't have to cook it. And I'm not, I'm not judging or dogging on anybody for that because I'm the same way. Sometimes I just don't want to cook. Also, I'm not that great at cooking. So it's a lot easier and better for me selfishly if I could go get someone else to do it for me because they do it better and they do it. And I don't have to. I don't have to clean. I don't have to pretend to try to cook. I just get it. 
order, get it to my, my table. And that's that. What I don't tell them, though, is that I need it. And I know that this is the creature submission. He hates when people say that because, again, you don't need shit. You're there out of convenience. Be more polite. Have a, Communicate more effectively when you're doing stuff like that. Again, there's also a perception that it comes off as rude to the, wait, the waiter or waitress. That, couldn't, that might not be your intent, and most of the time it's not, but you got to be, you got to, you got to step back and be more considerate and understand like someone can, you know, construe this, misconstrue this as me being rude. And the second or third or effects of that means that you get spit or come in your Alfredo. And you, we don't want that. So think about that beforehand. At the end of the day, you're out at a restaurant, you're ordering food. You, you got a pretty good, you know, pretty good life going on. If that's the worst thing that happens to you though. Um, again, we're, we're teaching lessons here. This is what we do, guys. Okay? We entertain, we share a few laughs, and we teach lessons. That's like the second big three almost. The slightly smaller three. This is what we do here on the show. We're always teaching. And it's in a fun, effective manner. Okay? What else we got on the list here? Let's see, what, I, what did I miss? The traffic stuff, we got many submissions about traffic and just bad idiot drivers. People changing lanes with no blinker, cutting people off. Or how about when someone's driving in like a middle lane or whatever, and they realize within 100 feet that they have to get off at the next exit. And instead of just wearing their mistake and doing a, a loop around to come back to the exit, you know, doing going past, get the next exit, turn around, do the how you do, whatever. They decide to slam on the brakes right there so that they can turn a 90-degree angle over into that exit lane and get off the ramp. Completely inconsiderate of everybody else on the road, like as if they're the only car on the road. And then they have no idea why people are honking or you cause an axe or someone hits you in the back, whatever it is. They just stop. That happens a lot, especially around here. This place in the D.C. metro area is loaded with drivers and loaded with idiots. And you put them on the road, you sprinkle in a little bad weather, there's a thousand percent chance of multiple accidents in the mornings on the way to work. A thousand percent. And that's not even mathematically possible. But I know as soon as it's raining out in the morning or snowing in the morning rush hour, I know for sure my drive just got 20 to 45 minutes longer because some jack off is going to get to a car accident because they're stupid and they don't know what they're doing. And it's frustrating. And a ton of people feel the same way. I got multiple people responding with traffic and idiot drivers driving them off the wall. Now, I have a little bit of an explanation for this. Okay. It's not my, it's not my original theory. Somebody else says, I forgot who. It's a, it's a famous person, probably Rogan. It was probably somebody on Rogan's podcast. Because I listen to that religiously because I'm a sexist, I guess. But they were saying that when you go driving, this is this is the theory behind why you get so easily angered out there on the road. There's no theory to to explain the stupidity. There's people just stupid and inconsiderate and clueless out there. But why you get so angry is when you get in the car to go driving anywhere, you automatically and subconsciously are already at a higher level of stress and tension and awareness. If you're a good driver and you have, you know, you have good SA, situational awareness, you got a wherewithal. When you're normal, watching TV, sitting on your ass at night, you're probably at like a two, one to two, maybe three stress high alert level, we'll call it. It extends up higher if you're watching cops or pornos. But normally when you're watching normal stuff or not the Giants or the Yankees, you're at a, you know, between a one and three uh, stress alert level, whatever you want to call it. But when you get to a car to drive, as soon as you turn the car on and get ready to go out of your driveway, you're at probably between a five and seven alert level and stress level, tense, alert, 
if you're a good, you know, if you're a good driver, if you're not an idiot, it's not a clueless idiot because you're paying attention to all the gauges. Make sure you got gas, making sure you're not overheating. The RPM is not too high, clocking too high. You're looking both ways before you drive. You put your blinker on. You're looking at other idiots on the road, pedestrians, dogs, animalia walking around. You're on alert, always bopping and weaving around, making sure that you're doing things safely and you're protecting yourself and whatever the precious cargo is in your vehicle. So now you got, let's say you're at a seven alert level. Now you got some asshole who's waving it out of traffic, no blinker, no cares, not even paying attention to what's going on. And they're threatening you and the precious cargo in your car and their safety. So now you're immediately going up from a seven to an 11 because this, this has bag almost killed you or almost ruined your car, whatever it is. So now your alert level and your intensity and your stress is off the charts because you already started so high. So logically speaking, it makes complete sense why something so seemingly trivial as somebody cutting you off or not using their blinker or whatever it is gets you so hot and bothered so quickly. The important thing, though, is to if you survive and everything is safe and sound, there's no accident, you step back, you cool down, you realize everything's going to be fine. It's not worth getting angry over Continue, you know, continue to get angry over, especially if you got the precious cargo. You want to set a good, you know, uh, example. That's the word I'm thinking of. Good example. And you want to cool off and understand that we're, we're good now. It's not, you know, me staying angry is not going to change what just happened. So think about that. Um, the other big thing, and this is related to driving, but also other stuff too. There was some feedback from multiple people who said this. But when you are like holding the door or you're doing something for someone, a stranger, uh, you know, holding the door at a grocery store, um, letting somebody in like in, into your driving lane, like if lanes are merging and you let someone in in front of you and they don't say thank you. That is as inconsiderate as you could possibly get without outwardly saying you know, go go screw to the person who held the door for you or let you into the lane. It's so rude and thoughtless and thankless. It's just unbelievable that people can see someone going out of their way, even if it's a, a little bit out of their way, just to hold the door open for them and they don't say a damn thing. They just walk right by. And the people who who have who get angry about this, the fans who submitted, do the same thing I do, and I appreciate it. They just still say you're welcome out loud to them. I hold the door for you. You walk by. You don't say thank you. I'm saying you're welcome as sarcastically and loud as possible. So you know that I know that you're an asshole. I'm not going to let you get away with it. You might not change your ways, but now you know you've been put on notice. I'm calling you out. And the same goes for the people who are driving. I let them in into the lane. They don't wave thank you. I'll sit there in the windshield and I'll go like this, waving like this. I'll get my I'll get my head down so that they can see me. I'm moving around. I'm moving and shaking so they get their intention in the rearview mirror. Or I'll pull up next to them and I'll continue waving. Open the window. Thank you. You're welcome. That's what you do. That's called manners. See, I let you in. You say thank you. That's how it works. I do something for you, you say thank you. You do something for me, I say thank you. It's called manners. We are supposed to learn it as children and continue it on as adults. Where was the break? What happened in your lives that all of a sudden manners just completely went out the window? Or maybe you never learned them. Maybe I have to have a discussion with your parents and find out why. Your, their kids turn out to be such inconsiderate assholes. Which brings me to the overall theme of all these seemingly trivial issues that get us so unnecessarily angry at times. Okay, we're bringing it all back. Full circle. It's a full circle back. 
the issue here is not these little one-off tiny things that really are not a big deal in our day. We know that. We at the junction are smart enough to critically analyze these situations and understand that these are not that bad during our day, whatever. But if you look at the common theme here, what is it? It's lack of consideration. It's inadvertent rudeness sometimes. Sometimes it's, it's, it's purposeful rudeness, but it's inconsideration. It's rudeness. It's complete lack of situational awareness and understanding that there are other people around you in this world. And it causes all these second and third order effects in life in your day and everybody else's day. Look at, go back to all these, all these issues that people get angry at and, and, and you can sit there and say, oh, it's not a big deal for every single one of these, all you want. But the big deal is that the reason all these little stupid shit things happen is because people are so inconsiderate and don't understand that there are other people in this world. And they might not be bad people, most of these things don't happen maliciously or on purpose because you're they're being dickheads. They're done because these people don't care that there's other people in this world. They don't even realize it. They have no concept that there are other people going, you know, going on around them, living around them, and that shit's going on around them. They don't care. They don't notice it. They are completely clueless to that. And they do these things out of absolute utter cluelessness. They didn't, they didn't say they didn't not say thank you to you because they don't like you or they feel above you. They just didn't even think that you existed. They just thought the door was holding itself open. Legitimately, this is the majority of the people. Because what happens when you do the whole sar- sarcastic, you're welcome. Most of the time, the people are like, oh, sorry about that. Or, or they say they backtrack. Oh, thanks. Because then the majority of them are just clueless. They didn't even see you right in front of their fat, stupid noses while they were walking through that door. They didn't see that car right next to them. They didn't even look for the car before they changed lanes. That's another thing that gets me going is when people change lanes before they even look, they start changing lanes. While they start, while they're changing lanes, then they turn their blinker on and then they look. Completely out of order. Who? How do you just change car lanes in the middle of DC traffic on a highway without looking first? Because there's a a 99% chance there's a car right there next to you that you have to wait for. They don't even look. They just assume there's nobody there. I'm the only person on the road. And again, it's not malicious. These people are not bad people. The majority of people are not mean, bad, rude people. They're just completely inconsiderate. That's a problem. Okay. That's not, that's not that trivial. That, that, that common problem is the reason for so many other bad things that happen in people's lives and so many other causes of anger and stress and negative emotions because of lack of consideration and utter cluelessness. And there's, there are a handful of people out there that are just assholes on purpose. They're just dickheads and they do that shit on purpose out of spite. I know that I know those people I've seen them before, but the majority of the people are just clueless. And that's the big question. When did that happen in society? When did, when did the mass amount of people in this world, just lose that awareness. Because I'll I'll tell you right now, when I was a kid, you better believe that Crazy Carol and JPL3 gave us a, a, a load of hell and a lot of beatings if we were inconsiderate to others, if we forgot to say thank you, if we walked in front of somebody out in public without even realizing they were there. Or if we just stop short and somebody walks into us because we didn't even you know, think that they existed. We heard about it. We got disciplined for it. So where in the timeline of events from over the past you know, 30 years that people just stop considering others in any regard? 
What did that stop? Where did the parents stop teaching that and holding their own kids accountable? Where did it all stop? That's the problem we need to solve. And it's not a trivial problem. And that's what we're trying to get to today is to understand that, yes, these little things are, are tiny, trivial issues throughout our day. And we can do a better job always of stepping back, taking deep breaths, and not letting it get to us, staying on the track of positivity. We can always do that. We will do that as part of the big three. But when you see these things happen, take note. Understand why they're all happening, the common denominator, and make sure that you're, you don't become like that and your future kids and your family members don't become like that too. Because that's the only way we're going to get it to stop. We got to keep calling out the inconsideration. And then we got to make sure the future is not going to become that as well. So teach your kids not to be inconsiderate. If you're a teacher, make sure your students know consideration and manners and politeness and situational awareness. Because right now, that's the, that's the big pandemic. That's the epidemic going on. It's lack of consideration. It's utter cluelessness. It's despicability. And I know we're tired of it. The junction is tired of it. If you weren't tired of it, you wouldn't be flooding my inbox with all these issues that have the same commonality, the same theme. And I hear it. I hear you. I'm listening. And I'm on your side. And we have to come together as a junction, as an LPDS universe, and try to get people to become better. And it starts from within. Take the look inside yourself when you were inconsiderate to others, whether you did it on purpose or not, and try to improve yourself. Because through your actions of goodness and manners and respect, others will learn. It's not just through words, it's through actions. Again, we are not high horse in anybody. We are not moral high horse in anyone. We are also human beings here in the junction. We got to understand that. That's another kind of sort of thing that happens with people is they listen to podcasts or watch shows of other people pontificating and, and flapping their gills. And they get into this mindset of like, oh, well, I listen to this guy or gal. So I'm already better than the population who doesn't listen to them or doesn't like that person. And they sort of mild, moral high horse than the others, if you will. We're not doing that here. Okay. We're taking accountability for our actions, understanding when we are the cause of trivial issues and angering, anger problems in other people's lives so that we can become better and that they can become less angry. And then by virtue, the people around you will see that and they'll follow suit, especially the kids. The kids follow, kids follow actions all the time. Kids follow actions. They might repeat and parrot words that you say, but they follow actions. Actions get sponged up and, and, and trapped in their brains for, forever. So remember that. And that's all I got to say about that. But before we go, big three. For those of you who don't know, the big three is the, th the three, what I consider to be the three most important things that you, you can and should do every day to become a better, happier, less stressful person, and in turn, spread that goodness to others through your actions and through your positivity. Number one, exercise every day. According to a lot of people in the, in the junction, there's no such thing as an off day. And there's really not. Even on rest days, there are things called active rest to get you moving and shaking, get the blood flowing, get the endorphins still rushing through your body appropriately without you having to uh, ineffectively do an extra, you know, a super hard workout. Because don't forget, if your body doesn't get the rest it needs, it's not going to get the progress it needs or the, the progress that you're looking for, the gains, if you will. But if you rest effectively, you can still get that moving and shaking in. Follow step one of the big three, and you'll still be good to go. There is a, there is a way to make it happen. Number two, the hardest one to do. We always say it's the hardest one. This is, this is what we talked about earlier today. It's don't be a shitty person. But, but, but pretend or understand. No, pretend. It's real. Understand that anybody that you have an issue with, 
especially on the internet and social media behind, you know, behind your keyboards, there are human beings over there. Whoever you have an issue with is also a human being with feelings and emotions and a reason why they became the person that they are right now that you hate so much. And your negative trolling and trash and shittiness, like legitimate shittiness, not that, not just jokes. Like I said, I love a good joke and a shit talk with friends and family and stuff. But legitimate shittiness and being mean to somebody that you don't even know, especially, or anybody, even if you know them, you're just hiding behind the computer or a text or whatever it is, that still affects people negatively. And the more people do that, the more other, the more everybody else is going to be living in negative because you're going to be living in the negative, finding people to troll and shit talk all over the place. They're going to be living in the negative because all they're getting is going to be getting hate. And that's going to translate over. Then they're going to be shitty to others. Well, if, if everyone's shitty to me, why would I be good to them? We got to reverse that cycle. Okay. We got to clear the waters out of the negative and the bad and spread the positivity. Be a good person. Refrain from sending that shitty message out. Don't tell your sister she's got a big nose and gets angry at herself looking in the mirror because of it. She doesn't. We got to be good people. So don't be a shitty person. It's tough. It's not easy. It's the toughest one to do. I, I make the mistakes all the time still. I'm trying to get better. We're all trying to get better. Again, I am not above reproach here. Nobody is. Don't ever forget that. Shove that slice of humble pie down your throats and remember that all the time. We all have to get better at that stuff. Number three, the most important one, be genuinely thankful and grateful for all the good you have in your lives. As I get older and as I try to try to be, be a better person, I realize more and more how important those good things are in my life. And it, and it, and it affects me greatly lately, emotionally, when I realize all the good I still have, even on bad days when I'm when I'm deep, deep in the negative, or I'm you know sitting here alone, or especially when I was, if you remember when I was down at uh at the beach fighting the trenches of war, the modern day D Day. If you guys don't remember that, um, I was there for several months defending your freedom and honor. That was lonely. That was I was as low as I got in a long time. And the, the thing that kept me going besides this podcast, which is really what I'm getting at is the good thing, is this podcast, you guys, you people, the junction, my friends and family, and, and understanding and realizing that how good you guys were in my life. And I sit here and I think about it every day, every day. I have a lot of spurts throughout the day where I bitch and moan about stuff at work, especially I like to make I like to I like to live in the negative on the joke side of the house, self-deprecating humor. I should talk things that are going on throughout the day. But in reality, when it's all said and done, each day I think about the good. I think about my friends and my family that are still around that I still get to talk to and be around at times. The good things that have happened to me in my life, the good things I currently have. And it it couldn't be it could it, it makes my day so good there there is no other thing in my life that makes my day and myself feel better my day better overall i know that was nonsensical i got it but nothing makes me feel happier and more uh, content and satisfied and positive feeling positive in my life than sitting back and thinking about all these good things and being grateful for them so I'm, I'm asking you, again, these are not three rules you have to live by. This is not a, like a, a, a propaganda, like dictatorship thing that I'm just telling you, you have to do this or you're going to be a shitty person and negative forever. No, these are just the three tenets, the three pillars. If you can you add staying strong as the fourth pillar, the fourth leg of the table that I believe truly that if you follow these, you'll become that better person, and live a happier life. And I say that because it, it works for me. It's, it works for me every day. So for you new people out there, that's the sort of the long of it. For the returning listeners, 
I know I usually I, I should be giving the quick and dirty because uh, you guys are probably tired of hearing it, but this is the most important thing I I discuss every episode is the big three, and I hope you guys are you know continue to listen and continue to strive to be better by following those tenets. Thank you guys again for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for providing feedback, whether it's for the questions I ask for upcoming episodes, whether it's just unsolicited DMs or text messages about the show. It's it's so encouraging. Even the negative stuff. I don't get much negative, and it's usually from strangers. In fact, I don't get much at all because there's not a lot of people that listen to this, and most of the people I know, which is which is even better. But any feedback I get, any interaction with you guys is awesome. It makes my day. And there, I, I can't, there's nothing else I can say to, to prove that to you. Just know like I, how much I feel good when I get to interact with you guys about this stuff that we talk about here and that I try to, you know, make funny or do whatever. You guys provide feedback and listening every week and tuning in and being ride or dies. It makes my day. And I'm grateful for it every single second of the day. So thank you guys again. I love you all. Stay strong.